Okay, excellent. So first of all, uh, a quick disclaimer. This will maybe not be a quite formal uh, talk. It's more um, open discussion maybe. Uh, some ideas that are obsessing me and probably are obsessing you as well because we are quite a peculiar crowd here. Um, so, <laughs> that, that was... <laughs> that was... Uh, <laughs> That was a starting point, but then I thought it was maybe a bit too generic, so I had to, <laughs> to narrow uh, the scope. And I thought, <laughs> yeah, what is a continuum? Because it's what brings us today. And it sounds a bit stupid, but actually when you add uh, this word, what is the essence of the continuum, then it makes sense. And uh, there is uh, something to talk about. So my English is terrible and I always have to look up to uh, definitions on this fantastic Wiktionary Open uh, Dictionary <laughs> to make sure that I am uh, nailing things. So the essence is the inherent nature of a thing, an idea, the true nature, etc. about then substance, spiritual being, blah, blah, fragrance, it, it, it's not relevant, but I mean, uh, what is the core of the, of the continuum? What is the, the kernel? Because it's such a multifaceted, polymorphic, omnipotent, you see, fancy words. <laughs> Overwhelming instrument, really. It is. Um, so, uh, I will have to make a digression, maybe about my background. So, I come from there. Um, I am a classical musician. I started with the cello. So, that was maybe year 20 before the moustache. Um, <laughs> And uh, it was like uh, a game for me really to discover new music instrument and play around and figuring out how pitches were organized in a scale, you know, uh, taking a trumpet and just noticing that only with the three valves you can access to all the overtones and everything. And, uh, but the big drama was that I had to pick one instrument uh, because I understood that it was not possible to learn uh, apparently, uh, seriously, music if you don't dedicate yourself to only one instrument. Uh, so that was a cello for me and it was a love-hate relationship. And uh, everything changed when uh, this appeared in my life, uh, the term in. I don't need the question marks, it's already, uh, yeah, a question mark in itself, the instrument. Um, so it's mysterious, it's, it's puzzling, uh, even today after 10 years of practice, I still wonder uh, why, what, 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 <laughs> what, what the hell. Um, and I approached it um, as a classical instrument, uh, obviously. So that were my first uh, <laughs> attempts to play classical music. Fortunately, these videos are unlisted today, but... Um, <laughs> So you see Beethoven, uh, Gabriel Fauré, that, that was my, my world. And uh, I mean, I didn't really consider, like electronic music for me was terra incognita. And seriously, I mean, all this topic of audio synthesis and expressive control were just fancy creatures in an unknown land. And the term is fascinating because it's an electronic instrument with acoustic-like attributes. Um, and really, you, could, you can approach it uh, as a classical musician with, uh, um, like with the same dedication you would approach the violin or the piano or harpsichord, whatever. But you could also approach it from the electronic music point of view, being a synth nerd and just being interested to the roots of electronic music. So that's, that's quite uh, something quite in... Um, uh, on the edge of music, and uh, I would say a hybrid <laughs> creature. Uh, <laughs> I love this picture. Anyways, if you are not familiar um, with the term, in, I have to make a quick explanation. So it's, it's extremely simple. You have only these two uh, antennas which you interact with. So the left hand, uh, yeah, which is on the left, but Anyways, it's a, it's a volume, um, and then the idea of Leon Theremin, who invented the instrument, was to mimic uh, like uh, orchestral uh, direction, so you, you louder, softer. I should have brought my theremin, but anyway. 
And uh, on the right hand, you control the pitch. So if you get closer, the pitch aug augments, and then you have the lower tones. Um, and that's it. I mean, you have no other uh, control. It's extremely pure, extremely simple. You are part of the electronic circuit, actually, because I am an electrode towards the instruments, uh, part of a capacitive uh, thing. And, um, and so it's so pure. Uh, I mean, what would be the sound design abilities, uh, even on, the, um, uh, on a fancy instrument like the Moog Geta Wave Pro, which is uh, like the ultimate somehow pro term. I don't like the pro terminology. It's very American, maybe. but. Uh, on, on this kind of pro instrument, the control are ex extremely simple. So you have the tuning calibration um, uh, control. So these are the two big wooden knobs on the top to calibrate your field uh, and be able to play uh, clearly. Then you have just an octave switch register, extremely basic, a mute switch. Uh, I should not even mention it. It's too simple. It's timber uh, tone presets. And actually, what it does, it just you just have a simple wave shaper and a low-pass filter. <laughs> so that's the most basic thing you could imagine about audio synthesis. I, it's not about, about it, really. Um, but then it has a soul, it has character, it has a true identity to it. And it lets the musician shine uh, in the playing. And it's fascinating to see that all theremin players um, really have uh, different styles. And if you give the same instrument, the same uh, sound, the same presets to two different theremin players, you will have something totally different. So that's where I think it's really similar to acoustic instruments where really, uh, I mean, two saxophonists, two violinists will sound extremely different. Anyway, uh, let's stop this digression, go back to the continuum. Um, so di did I mention that it was overwhelming? <laughs> um, and why is it so? Uh, also because th there is an, an acoustic decorrelation, you know. Uh, it's it's a more than an instrument, it's also a control surface. And we have seen uh, these days all the different alternative techniques that you can have, all the different way you can approach the surface if you want to play with, with, a, with a touch, uh, uh, fit your pedals, uh, do tapping, and even remap the, um, rewire the way uh, the pitches are organized. I don't know if you would like to have just one semitone over the entire surface. It's possible. So, uh, and all this is due to the the power of having speakers on electronic instruments. Uh, you, you are not de um, relying on physical effects. Uh, so it, it enables so much with our uh, synthesizers and everything. So another digression, sorry. Do you, do you know this guy? <laughs> it's Marcel Mull. Uh, he's French, obviously. And uh, he was one of the first classical saxophonist. And what is fascinating, I have no um, sound excerpts here, but he, the saxophone was also a new instrument uh, at this time, or at least uh, not really recognized as a proper classical instrument. And he, had to, he wanted to approach it so like a proper classical instrument, and he brought techniques, when you hear him play, it's crazy, like uh, extreme vibrato, like, like a violin player of the, of the era would do today, no saxophone serious saxophone player would, would uh, make such kind of ornamentation. Uh, and, and that's inspiring. Uh, and he, he did it also to, to make um, composers interested, serious composers interested in the saxophone by playing transcriptions. And we had the same in the term in realm with Claire Rockmore, who approached, uh, so you all know about her here, um, classical music, but only yeah, serious classical music. She, the, the sad thing is that she completely neglected uh, the new ideas, new compos compositions. But we can be thankful to her because uh, she, um, she found the voice of the theremin by doing so. Uh, she, while exploring existing repertoire, she found some boundaries, some limitations. Uh, like Marcel Mull probably did while trying to adapt. Uh, I don't know, you know, in the saxophone, classical saxophone, it's common to play uh, the back cello suites. And, but obviously, you have to make some uh, adaptations. But it's an excellent um, piece of the repertoire to try out um, 
uh, like the limits of the instrument from uh, existing uh, ideas. So back to the topic, this one, what is the essence of the continuum? Um, what I think is that um, it's interesting to consider it um, with a bare, the bare minimum of sound design. So um, I loaded, I think, a patch here, uh, which is extremely basic. So you have uh, very rich overtones. Obviously, it's a rich sound. But I didn't uh, apply any effect any, and anything else that just mapping the x-axis and the z-axis. And in my opinion, this is what the core of the instrument is. When you are in front of it, that's what it invites you to do, uh, ju just play this way. And then, um, yeah, it's a way to avoid getting lost in the sound. Um, just if I take like uh, fancy presets, uh, like this one, I don't know, uh, I, I just mapped like overtones and on the, on the Z axis and then you get, you get lost in the sound basically when you're trying to play, J just making this ever is already something. So that's cool, but then you feel like you, you are an amazing continuum player. But, but just <laughs> <laughs> just you, 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 did, you did nothing. So that, that, that's why <laughs> I, I find it valuable to, to exercise yourself with a very harsh uh, and uh, absolutely not helping uh, sound. This one is honestly is horrible, uh, I mean, through the, the, the own resonator, uh, there is some acoustic, um, acoustic presence, but then you, the musician has to do everything, like on the theremin, the sound of the theremin is crazily uninteresting. Uh, so uh, everything, it's all about, about articulation. Um, so if I would like, I don't know, to get some inspiration from the violin, it's not, it, it shouldn't come from the preset in itself, even if this one could be reminiscent of the violin, it should be by the articulation. So this kind of démanché uh, ideas or Sorry, I'm not in shape to, to, to play correctly, but you, you see the meaning. You, you can make it sound like a violin. Uh, if you want an attack, you have to do, to do your own. Um, if you want to make it sound like, like a bell somehow, uh, really, uh, the release, you have to do it by your finger. And have this awareness of how, the, uh, how to make the sound decay. It's the same thing on the theremin, just with the volume antenna. You, you can trigger something and you have to make your own resonance. So you have to shape your sounds. Uh, it's organic in, 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 uh, in every way. Uh, what did I want to say? Yeah, and it makes me think, maybe you have, you have seen some um, classical master classes over, over, I don't know, in, in person or over the internet, but if you take like any piano master class and you have like a, a great master uh, who is teaching a young student how to, to, to play some Chopin or Beethoven, they have some ana fancy analogies like, uh, oh, make it sound like a trumpet, but it's, it's, it's a keyboard, it's a piano, so it, it's always uh, a bit puzzling to hear that, but actually it makes sense. The articulation is key and you, you, can, um, you can learn a lot from... Uh, so the point is not to imitate, but to, to get uh, some inspiration from that. And once again, the, the classical repertoire, so maybe I, I will just change the sound because this one is really harsh. Um, <laughs> But um, uh, like I like to use um, brass-like this kind of sound. Also, it's it's, it's helpful. Uh, I lost myself. <laughs> um, Yeah, yeah, the repertoire, exactly, see what's possible. So for instance, if I want to explore polyphony, um, uh, I can take pieces of the repertoire which has, are expressive, like the Barber Ardagio. I'm 
m'a cité de... Anyway, non mais, you, you, you see... You see the idea, I take a piece from classical music, I see how I can adapt it, and then the only thing I did on this patch is, uh, because on the original score, you know, there is a wide range, it's a full orchestra, so you have the basses, so I just mapped uh, an area where it's an octave lower, and the great thing is that, so it matches the piece, so I can... Uh, but, so you see what I mean? It's I can have this, this lower octave, yet, but, but I mean, without using pedals or anything, it's, it's just in front. I, I am still sticking to my rule of, of having the most basic preset ever. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and from this, this kind of repertoire, you can also use, um, I don't know, pieces from Satie. I don't know this one, but uh, things where, where some classical composers use uh, uh, strong concepts of just uh, making transpositions in the pieces and all these kind of things are inspiring to practice on the instrument. Uh, so, um, on the theremin it would be, so on the continuum you, you would maybe get inspiration from string quartet repertoire, from piano repertoire, on the theremin it's more like singing voice um, or cello. Um, anyways, uh, how could I conclude uh, this? Um, the continuum has a voice of its own, it's a true instrument, and I think it is a classical one in the sense that it's, uh, uh, it's, it's classic for the future. I mean, uh, it's not just uh, an, uh, an invention uh, that is here and that would be replaced and updated maybe in the future with uh, uh, as Lippold mentioned, uh, it's um, the same idea that you had since the beginning, and uh, and it makes sense. It, it truly is something like the term. You know, I remember this time um, it was an interview for a, for a fancy magazine uh, about the term, and they asked several term players across the world, and I, they just asked about so what would be the future for the instruments. And I just say that uh, the way it is is fantastic. So they just they tell, oh, Grégoire Blanc is against progress. Uh, <laughs> that, that's not my point. Uh, I, I just mean that there is like uh, s some instruments have, have development, and then you find a sweet spot where you don't need much more in terms of control to, to achieve a lifetime of, of practice, like the violin is the same since the 17th century, the theremin now maybe since the 50s don't evolve other, other than, uh, I mean, the technical uh, issues of uh, transistors and vacuum tubes, whatever. And maybe we are at the same state with the continuum and the osmos as well, uh, fantastic. Uh, all that to say, I'm, I am not against uh, sound design, I love it, uh, but still for performing like li live, I like the idea of really approaching a musical instrument and not having to lose myself in, uh, in sounds and um, that's something that I reserve to the studio. Maybe j just to prove that uh, I am not a, a narrow spirit classical <laughs> musician, <laughs> I will just make, make you listen to, to a short excerpt of uh, a piece that I recorded during lockdown, so it's a bit crazy, honestly. Uh, and it's layering sounds. Um. So you, you here you have synthesi modular synthesizer, you have deep texture, there is a church organ in play as well, continuum. If I go further... Like this part. also on top of it, so merging genres, it's, it's not electronic music anymore, now it's something, I, I, I mean, <laughs> you, you will listen to the piece afterwards, but um, so yes, I'm open to uh, like musical discretions, I mean, it makes no sense if you listen to, from the beginning to the end, but um, I am attached to yeah, the fact of having uh, 
expressive electronic instrument. And uh, I would like yeah, also to a big shout out to the Hacker Audio team who made this possible. And, and uh, it's so inspiring for us young or less young musicians to, to have these tools at our disposal. Voilà. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Some so yes, I was wondering, um, have you tried running your theremin through the continuum? Is that an option? Uh, it could be if you had um, uh, like MIDI abilities because the continuum is digital and the continuum is uh, analog. Or if you could translate CV controls from the theremin to the continuum. Uh, I know Randy George who did uh, something amazing about that. But I was not really into it. Um, as I said, <laughs> So it's, it's funny because really, uh, when I'm in the studio, I like to make crazy sound design, but then performing. And I was never confident of um, triggering different sounds with the termin. Every time I tried to map the antenna to some other parameters, I felt I, I lost something. So yeah, that, that's maybe not my, my approach so far, at least. <laughs> right. Any, yes? Uh, you, you were mentioning Yeah. Saxophone. Yeah. The continuum does not still has its, its own right. Yes. Do you have any idea of how this would happen? Uh, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's our duty, I think. We, we have not found the Clara Rockmore of the continuum yet, uh, and I w never will have the pretension to try to even become some kind of pioneer well, like that. Um, but uh, no, I think just in my case, you, you know, we, what is fascinating is that we all have different approaches about these instruments. Um, I think I, I am still in the process of, um, like I did for the Termin uh, some years ago, um, finding some inspiring pieces from existing repertoire, trying to see what are the possibilities, the limitations, we, we, you know, uh, Rob made a wonderful series about um, techniques and when you have to, to cross your fingers, it's all this kind of thing we have to figure out and it's great to come from existing well-written pieces to see what are the limitations um, and then try to develop like a consensual uh, playing technique. What you mentioned about playing this way, I, I never thought about it, but it's true. It's comfortable. We have to find the best. You know, I, I didn't mention the term in technique, maybe another discussion about that, but uh, it's a consensus now. Uh, when, when you saw maybe 20 years ago, um, every term in players played totally in a different way. Some were, you know, using the volume antenna uh, on the other side and playing like that um, with me a meter to, to map the pitches. Today we all play standing or seated, but in this kind of position. We are many to have a s octave like technique. Uh, th there are like best practices that arise with experience and uh, we should try to develop some best practices for the continuum. So some ideas maybe not using the sum too, too much on this kind of little, little things that, that would help. Um, yeah, for the approach. I don't know if it, if it makes sense. 